Hi and welcome to another tutorial on Adobe Photoshop CS3. Today we'll be learning about basic shapes and a little bit of the graphical interface of Photoshop CS5. Well, this is Photoshop and right now we are looking at your customized, customized workspace areas. You can have uh, some uh, pre-default customized work areas or you can just create your own. I created by my own name, by the name of Mudassir. You can just click and create your own customized work area, name it test and add keyboards, shortcuts and menus if you want to. I prefer to do that so save and another shortcut, uh, another uh, workspace has been created. Now these are all the tabs and uh, uh, extra palettes, color palettes and other things that are available in Photoshop you can go to the min windows menu and access them or you can go to the right side of Photoshop and all these uh, few predefined tabs are already open with, which are grouped together in tab groups you can remove all the tabs that you want from your tab group or you can remove the tab group as all together <coughs> Also, you can have the option of resetting the test to come back to the original state in which you saved your uh, workspace. Also, you can come back and delete a workspace. Uh, let's say we want to delete the test workspace. So right now it's enabled, so it won't be deleted. So let's select another workspace and now select the test workspace that we want to delete click delete and yes now I'm going to fine-tune the Mudassir my personal workspace and I want to rem I'll remove some tab groups and tabs just select and there's a small symbol on the right side just click on it and then pop-up menu appears and then you can just s delete or you can say close group or the close the tab that you want so this is looking fairly nicely decent and now I'm going to show you that on the left side is the tools palette it has different tools for drawing moving manipulation color picking painting buckets etc and we will come to all these tools in further coming lectures so now my Mudassir tool workspace is already set as the way I want it to be. I haven't reset it and I haven't done anything to it. All the previous settings are already enabled and all the tab groups that I deleted are already there. Deleted. I'm going to file and select a new file and I'm I can create my own customized presets as well. Let's say that I want to create another preset. So I'll pick 15 millimeter, 15 millimeter, and before that I'll select grayscale, 8 bit color, and probably 300 to 1. I'll change it to 150 DPI. DPI is short for pixel resolution. So I'm going to save it and it gives you a predefined value of what you can save it and I add in 50, 150p and I click OK. <coughs> so now this customized preset has been created and it is appearing in my custom preset area. I can select custom preset and I can see that the size of the file is 7.74 kilobytes and this is what the file will be uh, file will uh, be initially before you actually start working on it you can also change the color types the background color uh, <coughs> the color mode etc or you can just go to another setting i prefer to work in international paper sizes and i have uh, it has a huge variety of different uh, variations you can also create your own customized paper sizes but i go for a3 size when i go f make my drawings
checking to see the settings and it looks all right the size is 49.9 MB and click OK now I am not very much satisfied with this background white color and so I create another layer and I change the background layer color to something of a darker tone so let's do that and right now my PC is gone a bit uh, stalled so I paused it and played it back again so okay so we can zoom in our work area zoom out using the Z key pressing the Z key and pressing the spacebar key helps us pan in our work area you can also use the H key for the hand tool to pan and uh, I'm just going to remove this icon by clicking on it and uh, I'm going to rename this locked layer into a background layer and I'm going to fill it with blue but still this blue looks to be very bright uh, zooming out to see what it looks like overall and I'm still not satisfied with it so I go to image probably I might choose some lighter color from the color picker let me just see what color I want somewhere around here okay so first I'll apply this color tone and if I don't like it then I can obviously change it using the bucket tool or I can just change it using the hue saturation values that I'm going to show you right now and uh, this looks okay slightly changing the saturation value on this go to image settings color settings and hue saturation shortcut is control U now it looks like that this seems to be fine you can also lock your layers depending on how you want to lock it fully you want to lock the movement of it you want to lock the pixel information or you want to lock the lock so that it doesn't paint on this layer so I locked it fully and now I'm going to start using the brush tool and I'm going to show you the basic five shapes <coughs> in nature these five shapes exist everywhere the first is the circle let's change the color to black and let's draw okay so the flow of my brush seems to be very thick so I go to brush settings and I click on shape dynamics to that it gives me a pinched look right now it's very free flowing and it looks like a marker I want it to look like a pen stroke so I use the erase key and I erase all the information out there that I drew on this second layer and now I'm going to show you that how you can edit your stroke styling So as I click on the shape dynamics checkbox it gives you more of a stylized approach and the more pressure you apply on the tab uh, tablet pen the more thick the lines go the less pressure the more thin the line goes so now I'm going to draw a circle I try to first start by moving over the line and first let's draw the line so line is a bit easy then we can draw the second shape is the arc these two shapes exist in nature and they are the building blocks for all complex shapes let's say we add in some more shapes like let's say if you want to draw a circle or a triangle or a square they are also basic shapes okay so now I'm drawn three points and I want to move my hand steadily and then after three four tri movement tries I actually draw the line and as you can see my computer is a bit 
stalling so the lines are not perfect let's try it again <coughs> point one point two so I'm going to draw an arc around these three points and here you go so this looks like a okay arc the first ones look so so <coughs> the third basic shape that exists in nature is a square having a little bit trouble with the, the line here and fixed it using the erase key to erase the over, overlapping lines and it looks like a so-so square again I can improve the overall dimensions by just fine-tuning the line so this looks like a perfect square or a semi-perfect square now we are going to work on the triangle so drawing a triangle is a bit tricky but uh, there is a very easy step you can just draw three points and move your hand on this uh, two points or you can just click and shift click on the other points and a triangle a perfectly or a slightly semi perfect triangle is created this is another uh, another trick in photoshop if you want to draw a straight line at any angle just click and then shift click on another point and the line will be created so this comes in handy for drawing complex shapes at times Now I'm showing you how to click shift click the technique of drawing lines in straight lines in Photoshop at any angle. Okay, so the last shape that we are going to draw the fifth basic shape in nature is a circle. So like there are many ways that you can draw a circle. I mean there is a novice method and a proper artist method of drawing a circle. First you move your hand over the work area and then you just draw the circle. So now this circle looks like an artistically drawn circle though still it doesn't look like a perfect circle but this is the right way of drawing a circle most students or most art students especially what they do is what they do is, is that they start drawing these small dotted lines and then they uh, after a small while join them together so a proper circle that I made before takes like four to five seconds while this technique of using dotted lines to draw a circle takes like forever or you can say just takes about around one minute but still this is a very terribly bad practice that most kids or beginner artists use to, for drawing their shapes and this does not only apply for only circles I mean they do this for everything they keep on drawing lines 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 small lines they're not very prominent with drawing straight and free-flowing lines and this is normally what I try to tell my kids in my classes that they should do more often they should not follow this second method they should follow the first one so this is all uh, about the basic shapes now I'm going to try to explore some of the uh, drawing 
uh, tool called the the vector drawing tool and let's take the example of this arc that we have drawn with these three points So these points, if you draw tangents to these points, they are called anchor and they are at 90 degree to the arc or the flow of the arc and in every software, Coral Draw, Photoshop, Illustrator or any other uh, uh, graphic software, it's called anchor points and normally people don't like to switch from one software platform to another just because these terminologies are different but if you get your basic knowledge or basic understanding uh, about where these terminologies came from then you can use any kind of software and believe me I personally use more than one software so I've chosen the path shape and I create another layer so I click on the first point and click and drag on the second point and it draws an anchor now this matches the direction and the flow of the arc and anchors can always be edited later on so now I'm drawing the third anchor point and the third anchor point doesn't seem to be falling in the exact curvature of the arc so I'm going to have to edit these points I can well um, I might as well create another point the fourth point this is where the arc is ending and uh, now I'm going to start editing the points I can use the direct selection tool and the uh, path selection tool to edit tangent points I'm using the path selection tool and it comes about to fairly matching how the both two arcs look like so I try to match it to one side and the other side gets disturbed and it takes some time to tweak it over tweak the other uh, corresponding point uh, anchors to make it come to about what you want it to come to you can also add in anchor points by selecting convert to anchor point and it has a shape like a tweezer so now I can reduce this arc and now this looks relatively similar <clears throat> to the arc that I created by hand now this is on layer 1 and on layer 2 you can see that this arc is matching the curvature of the arc that I drew you can turn off the drawing layer 1 to see to see how it looks like turning the layer one on and off and now I think it looks satisfying enough like the arc that I drew by hand so now I want to actually use this second layer and use this vector path that I created and create a stroke outline or a make a line that follows this vector shape so I can just select the work path turn it to path 1 and 
select it and see if I can turn it select this path I can go and stroke it from here create a stroke from here or I can just select stroke path it will give you a few options brush and other uh, other options you can just select brush brush tools if you stimulate pressure it will create a very bland and very uh, sorry about that very regular looking vector shape or a ve vector arc still it uh, it's been rasterized because it's in a raster layer and uh, we'll come to the concept of raster layers and vector layers later on so we can create vector shapes also using the vector shape option instead of using the path option but uh, right now I'm just showing you that you can create vector shapes and vector uh, objects using uh, I mean raster uh, raster raster shapes and raster objects using vector shapes as well so now this is pinched pinched layer and I actually selected the stimulate pressure option on and this created this pinching arc effect move these two effects all together maybe I might move them upwards move the first layer layer one down and move the second layer arc layers upwards so this is how it looks like how these two arc shapes look like so there are two layers you can also auto select these two layers by clicking and dragging but you need to have the auto select uh, sub option check checked on if you check it off then you cannot select them now save the file on your desktop give it some name and save it as a Photoshop PSD file click save now this file is saved you can also save your files right after you have created them sometimes it so happens that the lights go out or you uh, uh, computer gets disconnected or laptop gets uh, out of juice so it's always good to save your work after five to six minute intervals so that it, you keep your work up to date you don't have to save it right at the end of it so now I'm going to create another layer and I'm going to try to make a circular shape and I'm going to add depth to it and the way we can add depth to it and uh, depth to a depth to a 2d object is by shading it and adding shadows to it but to create shadows you must have to have a light source from which light falls on that object so I'm creating a straight line or a horizontal line and I'm going to draw a circle notice that my circle drawing is pretty much out of order so I can do is I can just fix my circular drawing and then use the eraser tool to fix all my errors now I'm using the eraser tool make sure that you guys get that this is just as a reference that how my circle should look like how big my circular object should look like and how it should be on a flat surface how how it should be placed on a flat surface I can always scale it upwards or downwards depending on how, how I want it to be placed so I'm scaling it vertically so that it looks like a circular ball I've not thought about 
how what it should look like i mean it can be a tennis ball a snooker ball a pool ball anything i think a pool ball would look nice a red pool ball i'm drawn a point and this is going to be the light source so the light is actually following in from that light source in straight line I move my object so that i can calculate just using the shift click key to actually calculate where my shadows are going to be formed so now what i can do is i can create a shadow based on the information that i've been given from a light source and the shadow is fairly in an elliptical form and so now i'm going to draw an ellipse that intersects the base and the uh, i'm going to now uh, i named this light source or ls this is the primary light source and uh, the ellipse that makes the shadow is going to be intersecting the base line and the two edges of the light source so let's move our mouse first so that we get an impression of the ellipse and uh, now let's draw the ellipse make sure that your ellipses are not pinched from uh, the edges and they are smooth circular from the edges most students also make this very terrible mistake of making ellipses that are pinched off from the edges and they should not be pinched off they should be circular from the edges so now as a reference i drew an ellipse fairly e equivalent and still it does look like slightly pinched but it is not delete some portion of the area so this is how the ball is creating or forming a shadow at the base so now i'm going to create another layer and i'm going to fill this uh, layer with the shadow information of the object so this area is basically the area where the shadow is being formed and it can be a very hard shadow depending on the strength of the light source or it can be a very smooth shadow depending on the strength fixing my outlines so now i'm going to create another layer before if create another layer i s use the magic wand key and select the inner area where the shadow is being casted and i clean the marquee selection from irregular cuts so that it's slightly smooth i use the lasso tool shortcut is l create another layer then i add a black fill to it So now I'm going to go to the filter menu and use the blur Gaussian blur tool to see if it can form smooth shadows or it should form a very hard shadow. So right now it looks like it's uh, Gaussian blur doesn't seem to be working. Let's try some other options or we can come back to Gaussian blur again if we don't find some other blurring options okay so the at the base edge of the circle there seems to be some blurring and i don't want blurring over there so how can i fix this let me check some other blur option hmm lens blur no gaussian blur no hmm okay so what if i add some color to the back side the ellipse area that I deleted uh, 
okay let's try Gaussian blur one more time okay so it looks fairly decent now and that area that is at the back of the circle is going to be hidden by the fill or the uh, color that we are going to add into the circle so we don't have to worry about the back side uh, how smooth or how blurry it looks come back to layer 3 and check to see that we have drawn the circle and the shadows on the proper layers turn the shadow layer off and let's turn uh, to our layer 3 and start coloring it use the airbrushing technique hardness to z uh, brush hardness to zero so that it looks like a smooth airbrush and the opacity i turn it down to 20 percent and i then start applying a color tone to the uh, shape circular shape apply a color tone first color tone wash and then i gradually add slowly add in more color there are two techniques of adding color you can go from light to dark or you can go from dark to black uh, dark to light so you can go from a very light red color to a dark red color tone or a brownish color tone or you can go vice versa from a brownish color tone to a dark red color tone the choice is all up to you normally uh, it depends from person to person and artist to artist and sometimes the clients also I mean I remember there was a Batman series animated series in the 90s the very first Batman animated series they actually drew all their animation on a black paper instead of white traditional white paper or traditional white animation paper they used black paper and they drew their drawings and uh, from dark to bright they came from they started working from dark to light so it was a very uh, the output or the outcome of that animated series came to be very promising and uh, uh, i think that batman episode or the batman series is still considered to be one of the best batman series that was cr ever created up till now and again my pc seems to be stalling and it's uh, slowing down so i give it a few seconds catch up and uh, again it's causing me problems so give it a few more minutes and i guess now it's working fine okay so now it's slightly coming to the shape that a circular ball should look like with the shadows highlights but we can still work around with it and we can still make it look more detailed so let's start adding more tone or color to our uh, object and try to add some specular highlights I'm just trying to pick and choose where the specular highlights are coming from and this looks a bit too much this looks okay okay so I'm adding in color smoothing it out adding some more highlights so now this looks like a circular sphere or a, you can also call it a bowling ball if you're going too big or let's keep it a pool ball okay so now I'm picking colors from in between these two color tones and I have to pick colors from your work area you just press the alt key and then select the color area that you want to pick picking color and still I'm using opacity at 20% so that it comes to a smoother transition now it looks fairly coming close to a circular sphere adding more detail more uh, uh, work and now I'm going from 
dark to light or you can say from up to down you can go from down to up meaning light to dark or vice versa it just depends on your in the way you're working sometimes people go from one way to the other quite instantly and they don't realize it so now it looks like a very blurry out blurred out circular sphere spheres are normally very sharp edged so how can we fix this problem we'll come to that in a few minutes just let me add in more detail add in more shadows now i'm going to add in some more shadows over there on the top make it a bit more darker now i'm going to add more shadows pick a darker tone of brown and go down over here add more color information again pc names seems to be stalling but it's all right okay so here i add more shadows change the color values go down darker more and go to 50 as opacity no 50 doesn't seem right go back to 20 again and now it looks like a proper spherical ball but still it looks nowhere near like a spherical ball because the paint seems to be uh, seems to have bladed out from our uh, reference area that we drew the outline that we drew so we can come over and fix that any time and uh, i guess it's coming close to that time where we can get it fixed so we select the circular marquee tool and create a circular marquee using pressing the shift and the space key to move it as appropriately proportionate to where we wanted it to be and now this is a circular marquee tool and we have the key pressed as soon as we uh, mouse key uh, mouse button pressed as soon as we release it we its marquee is created and then we go to select and inverse selection so that the outward area is selected and then we delete press delete key or the backspace key and it deletes now now this looks like a perfect sphere we move the layer four down and this looks like proper sphere like object so i guess you uh, now know how to draw a perfectly looking or a slightly perfectly looking artistically looking sphere in photoshop and how to use the brush tool and, and what are the sub options i'm just going to label the areas of the sphere what they are and uh, i might label them wrong probably or i might label them right but i guess they are close enough so uh, that's it for today's lecture and i thank you very much for joining me and seeing what uh, we are doing here in my class and uh, thank you see you very soon good day